Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to give my final opinion of Final Fantasy Brave XVS War of Divisions. So I went into this game wanting to really like it, but I had also already been warned before I started that this game is a massive disappointment. And for someone who works full time, I would say this game truly is a massive disappointment because of the sheer amount of time you have to put into the game to play it properly. Okay. So and in addition, the other thing that really drives me nuts about this game is that I can see the potential, but unfortunately the game is ultimately just another auto battler. So between these two factors, I already don't like it, but there's additional things about the game that really make me dislike it. So I'm going to cover basically, I guess, my disappointment with the game and why I think I truly can't recommend it. So first of all, you can see here that my energy is about to recharge. You get one energy every three minutes. Okay? And the energy amount of energy you can hold steadily increases as you rank up. However, what that means is let's say you have, I don't know, let's say we have 80 energy at maximum, right? If you multiply that by three and then divide by 60, that means you only, you have to pretty much log in once every four hours to use the energy properly. I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons to Langridson Mobile in this video. And by comparison, Langridson Mobile lets you hold 120 energy regardless of your level. And the energy recharge is once every five minutes. So Langridson Mobile, their expectation is that you sign in, what, twice a day? roughly once every 10 hours by comparison this game expects you to sign in once every four hours and that's later on right after the early stages so i'm already not a big fan of that okay. you in order to optimize your energy usage right you have to sign in a ridiculous number of times secondly okay language mobile really focuses on reducing the amount of grind that you have to do because they allow you to sweep a lot of the battles, right? So if you, like your dailies, you can just sweep them once you've cleared them with the Secret Realm Blessing. This game has no real sweep feature. Okay. Or it does, I should say, but the sweep feature is ticket-based, okay? So for example, if I want to sweep this map, the, the event maps can't be sweeped. You have to auto-battle them, right? So that's very, very time-consuming. The maps that can be sweeped are the storyline maps, right? If you need to farm for certain items in the storyline maps. Uh, I have to download something. So let's just quickly download that. So with storyline maps, once you've cleared them for the first time, you're allowed to just use skip battle and use up your energy this way. However, it's, it's ticket based, which means once you've used up all your tickets, you can't sweep anymore unless you get more. And I think the only way to get tickets is either through, I guess, purchases, as well as you can occasionally get some free ones from the shop. More on that later, okay? So that's one thing I already really, really dislike. Another thing I dislike is a lot of the things in this game feel like a major cash grab, in particular, there's a lot of things in this game where they want you to watch a video to get additional bonuses. Of note, for example, energy. Three times a day, you're allowed... Three or six times, actually. I Sometimes this seems to be charged twice. But in any case, three to six times a day, you can watch a video to restore your energy by 30. You're definitely going to do that if you want to play efficiently. So that's already 90, you know what, 90 seconds of your life wasted because each video is roughly 30 seconds. Not just for energy does this occur. Okay. If I go into the summon section, there's also these video summons and you can do this nine times a day. So that's nine additional video views, right? So we're up to 12 video views, 12 to 15 video views every single day. And I'm just going to do this normal summon quickly. <laughs> I don't know why since I'm planning on dropping the game, but 
moving on. Okay. So there's this free normal summon that can be done three times a day, and there's a cool countdown on this. So it's further forcing you to log in multiple times a day uh, to do the limited normal summon. Similarly, the video thing, as I said, three times a day, same kind of cooldown. So you have to log in at least three times a day to use up these things. Okay. Another reason I feel this game is a cash grab, it, other than these videos, is that there is a paid currency in the game. So yes, you can get these crystals, right? But the crystals is split between the paid version and the free version. And a whole bunch of these summonings, in order to do them, you need to have the paid version. So they're forcing you to buy crystals in order to do things, right? And once again, go, just going back quickly, in order to do these paid summons, you need 2,000 crystals. Well, 2,000 crystals is going to cost you roughly, look at that, $55 Canadian. So it's expensive, very expensive. Okay. And then up next, there is also, based on how much money you put into the game, you get rankings that gives you additional bonuses, right? So, you know, higher speed functions, right? Two times speed functions, right? More energy purchases, you know? The, high, the more money you spend, the more bonuses you get. So... <laughs> yeah... <laughs> I mean, what else can I say about that, right? They really want you to put money into the game. And... Other than that, the thing that really really makes me annoyed about this game is that... In, again, once again, in comparison to Langris and Mobile, for this particular game, in order to get your heroes fully leveled up, I think you have to get around 7 copies of the hero, right? In order to be able to limit break them fully. Roughly 7 copies, maybe even more, right? Because it, the uh, number of shards of the hero you need to level them up keeps steadily increasing. Yes, there is a way to get some free shards, but it's very very slow. So, I suppose if you're super patient and willing to play this game, you can eventually get the hero fully limit break it, uh, fully limit breaked, with you know five upgrades. But it's going to take you a lot of time. So, for example, I have an MR hero rather than the ultra rare hero, and you can see that the first limit break I think was around I don't even remember how much shards it took for the first one, maybe twenty. The second one is going to take forty though to get the second limit break. And then the third limit break took around, I think, 80. So it doubles, right? 80. And then the fourth limit break is going to take 160. And then presumably the fifth one will take 320. So you can see the limit break costs are pretty much exponential, right? So 20, 40, 80, 160, and then probably 320 next would be my expectation. And then in the case of Medina, I guess that's pretty much doubled. 40, 80, 160, 320, 640 potentially. If that's the case, it's going to take you an insane number of draws of a hero to get them fully leveled up. So getting fully leveled up URs is going to be very expensive or take a very, very long time. So those are the things I already disliked about the game in regards to cash grabbing, right? At least with Langrits and Mobile, you can do 9 data fate runs every day to get shards. So over time, you can get your heroes up to the full star level in around 3 months. You know, it's going to take way longer in this game, guaranteed. So we've already talked about some of the things that I dislike. Time consuming, cash grabbing, right? Very expensive to play if you want to have top level heroes and finally and then of course uh, you know you having to spend a lot of time auto battling and then finally the thing I also really dislike about the game is actually the artwork or the graphics or let me be clear I like the artwork I like the design of the characters a lot and so on 
But let's jump into a battle to show the reason why I dislike a lot of this. Okay. So I'm just gonna jump into not a storyline battle because those take time. So let's try. Uh, they have a story. They have plot, right? So I'm gonna just jump into one of the event battles and hopefully that can display this other issue that I am encountering. So let's jump into one here that I can do. So just a quick note, a lot of these battles can be done three times a day, right? So you're gonna have to auto battle all of these three times per day battles. <laughs> you know, so there's just a lot of battles you have to auto battle, right? There's three here, six here, nine here, 12 here, 15, just from the daily battles part. Then you have um, in the storyline section, under the world quests, if you choose to do these, you can do 10 world quest battles every single day. So that's another 10 auto battles that needs to be done. Yeah. And yeah, so actually I'm going to do one of these storyline battles because I think these ones show would be a pretty good show of one of the reasons I not a big fan. So. All of these battles have missions, right? And a lot of the missions require you to do things like make a chain of two or more or make an elemental chain of two or more. These ones absolutely need to be manually played if you want to get the chain. So I'm going to do an example battle of getting the chain. And to get a chain, you need three attacks of the same type, pretty much, right? Or multiple attacks of the same type. So a chain of two means that I have to have one attack, then a second attack, then a third attack of the same type, right? Elemental chain would be pretty similar. You need two or three elemental attacks of the same type. So maybe like three earth attacks or whatever element that your characters have. But you have to use the element attack, not their basic attack to get that. So just a few explanations there. And with that explanation, so I'm going to jump into the battle and just demonstrate it. The thing about getting the chain as well is your enemy can't move in the middle of the chain. If they get to move, the chain is broken. So you have to get multiple attacks in at the same time. So, oh, I have to turn off the auto battle. Right. So, first of all, the problem with this game, what I find is you can very often get your characters uh, stuck. So I'm going to switch to the movement mode and you can see that there is terrain right well sometimes enemy characters may be hidden in the terrain due to the height levels right so then you're, you're gonna have to adjust the view accordingly and then the view right you have to in order to see enemies if it's being blocked by height terrain you'd have to switch to this top-down view which actually looks really ugly in my opinion right so you're gonna have to constantly change views Right, if someone is hiding behind some height terrain, which is a pain in the butt. I feel like I'm fighting the UI. In addition to that, where I'm in the game right now, as you can see, and I honestly think the graphic quality of this game is quite ugly. Right? To me, what this looks like is it's like the early like 2000, year 2000 3D graphics, right? Yes, it does the job, but ultimately it looks very pixelated and it just doesn't look good. I far prefer Langrisser Mobile's 2D sprites with the anime look to this 3D artwork of very ultimately generic and pixelated characters. So yeah, and then finally, the feats, right? Like the feat that I just mentioned that I have to get, getting that free chain. It's not that it's difficult, it's just that it's time consuming. That's all it is. So I'm going to just demonstrate how I would get this. And this is gonna make this battle take some time. Okay. So right, every character you move, you'll have to move, choose the direction they face, then pretty much confirm the action. And so initially I'm gonna group up my archers so that they can get into range to attack properly. And I need to make sure that in the action order, they're all moving at roughly the same time too, right? so that I can chain attack with them. So 
which I early on I'm literally just waiting for them to come to me before I actually engage. So you can see that I'm using three archers. One thing about archers in this game is they attack at range, of course. But the other thing about them is if they're higher than the enemy, they get extended range. And finally, they um, it can be a hassle to get them to attack because you can see that they have this archer only has three range. So I have to get into three range of the enemies to attack. Right? So with in this case, I could only attack from this tile and this tile right now. So that won't work because that would only get me a two attack chain. So I need him to come closer. Which means I have to bait them into a proper position to get the physical chain attack. So I'm going to place my character who will take the hit over there. And then I'm just going to adjust my character positioning accordingly so that I can get hopefully three attacks on this guy. So it's very finicky to get the chain, as I said. Especially in my case, where I'm trying to do it with archers. If I'm on high terrain, then it becomes easy, but I'm not. So you can see that I'm struggling to move characters, because for example, it's very easy to misclick, right? So you have, like for example, you just saw just now, my character is right here. Let's say I want to move him, this character into this tile here. Well, instead, instead of moving this character into this tile, I clicked on Uni, my other character, instead. So in order to move to this tile, you would either have to use this drag feature with the uh, with this icon, with this I guess what's it called joystick control, or else you're going to have to change once again to that top-down view that I mentioned to move characters accordingly. So I just don't like the UI at all. <laughs> You're gonna hear me complain a lot about this game in this video. <laughs> you know what? Let's just move here. Because I'm busy trying to pull them to me. There we go. Perfect. So now they're finally in range for me to attack. And I get to it I think I get to act first with all my archers. So that's one, that's two, right? And three. Yes. So I get to act with everyone first. So this is where I can finally get the chain to occur. Right. So who is acting right now? Her. Well, let's just place her here and have her launch an attack, but I'm going to have to do the top-down view to target the right character because I want to hit the one in the back. Right. So you can see, in order to play this with uh, proper targeting manually, you're going to have to switch views constantly. All right. So now I'm going to start with the chain attack. So there's the first attack from one archer. I'm going to move my other character and have her attack this guy as, as well. Right. And then the second archer attack. So over here seems to give me the ability to attack this guy. So height advantage was why I can launch a four range attack there. And then let's have him do a stone toss to hopefully kill this guy. Not sure if that's enough. But it did. And then my final range attacker. Oh, she got to move again. Okay, so I'll have her launch another attack on this guy this time. And then confirm the action and finally let's have my final range attacker get that third attack chain right so there we go chain plus two right 
See, to get the chain as well, you can't have an attack of a different type in mixed in in between. So if I had any of these characters attack this guy, it would have broken that chain too. So like I said, it's a huge hassle to form the chains. And it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. But now that the chain is done, I'll auto battle the rest of this fight so I don't have to manually play it out because it's just such a pain. Actually, more reinforcements showed up. Which got one of my characters killed. So I won't get all the feats here, right? But I shouldn't have any problems at least clearing the battle. So, we'll just let it autoplay the rest of this. Which, as I mentioned, is rather time consuming. And why don't I actually change the view? Make it maybe look a bit more interesting than from the top down. Oh, also, when enemies die, after three turns, a crystal spawns on that tile, and the crystals provide some buffs like hit point healing and so on. Uh, until the crystal appears, you, you can't step on these tiles though. So dead bodies block the tiles as well. It's a weird mechanic that you can't step on a tile with someone that's dead. So she stepped on it, she got some hit points, some additional bravery, and some JP. that, you know, I got do not continue and make a chain, so I would replay this in the future to maybe have nobody get KO'd to get that at her feet for the extra rewards. Right. So there is a sample battle clear, you know. And I think that does cover all of my complaints about the game. So there we have it. I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, I work full time, for example, so I really don't have the time to log into a game to auto battle it for hours on end, right? Keep in mind that each auto battle takes around, for, for this game, each auto battle seems to take around five minutes or so, roughly. So. <laughs> if you're going to be constantly auto battling and then watching watching uh, videos of advertisements of other games and so on, I just don't see the reward that it's offered for all of that work, right? Langrissa Mobile, by comparison, there's battles where you have to actually play them out manually, and it, those are challenges, right? They're actually fun challenges that you have to think about the strategy to use. This battle. This game, Final Fantasy uh, Brave XVS War of Divisions, seems to be purely about auto battling. Right? You auto battle and auto battling for hours to make your characters as powerful as possible. So that's why I am most likely going to drop this game very shortly. It's just. <laughs> I mean, the only reason I'm playing it right now, in truth, is because, I hate to say it, the coronavirus. Um, if I didn't have some extra spare time, to be doing this, to test this out, I totally would have dropped it on day one. Yeah. From day one, I could already tell that this was a massive time waster and auto battler. So overall, yeah, I'm very disappointed with this game. I expected a game similar to Language to Mobile, you know, and that's not what we got. So that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video useful or interesting to you. If you have comments or disagree with my opinion, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to, you know, discuss with you about it, but let's not turn it into an argument, right? So thanks for watching, and on that note, Nitro out.